Guys, there's something I've been trying to point out for a good while here. And that is that you're being lied to, you're being manipulated, and you know it, but you're accepting it. And honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, take a look at this. SEC deadlocked in Grayscale case. Bloomberg analysts explain what will happen this week. You understand the funniest part? We all know the SEC is a corrupt agency. And I take the words corrupt here very seriously. What I mean with that is we cannot with certainty say that these people are acting out of the best interest of investors. What we can say for sure is that there have been extremely many motives for many of these individuals working there now or working there formerly to act in a certain way that is not in the best interest of the company, so to call it, or I should call it commissions, mission. And a good example of that is Bill Hinman as a one, Jay Clayton, Gary Gensler, and we could continue on like this for a little while. People that have acted in a strange fashion that is against the core principles. But I've been seeing many remarks here about Bitcoin spot ETFs and people ask me, hey, what's going to happen quickly afterwards? Let me tell you this. Guys like BlackRock don't think, oh, maybe the SEC will approve. Maybe they will not approve our application. No, they know exactly what the SEC is going to do because they're too powerful for these little type of games. You've got to understand this is not a $1 store trying to type of store where, where they can't get anything done. No, guys, we're talking about the biggest, number one, right? Biggest asset managers in the world. You want to know their rating? J just, just for fun, right? Just, 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 just for fun. You, 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 you might look at these numbers and think, oh, uh, 575 to one. <laughs> so if you ever thought, oh, maybe this is going to go through, maybe not. BlackRock's just taking a chance. You got to be taking a piss here. There's an absolute zero chance they didn't know what they were getting into. And my point here being, and why I said that so strongly at the start is, you're getting manipulated. These guys know exactly the game. BlackRock and guys of the sort, they're not entering this game for fun. They're entering it to make profit. So if prices after they've shown interest are going down, you gotta understand that major investors are looking at BlackRock's every decision. There are people like you and I that are sitting on the sidelines, right? Twinkling with a little feet, looking at BlackRock's every single move. The fact that Larry Fink and those guys have said, hey, this area is interesting. We've noticed a crazy amount of institutional attraction, let's call it. We want to make sure that people can buy and sell. And we have actually bought ourselves deeply into Bitcoin via MicroStrategy, but the price goes down. Yeah, that in no way, shape or form makes sense. And that's why I've said before, perhaps through some recent actions, like for example, the no action against Ethereum, even though the start was clearly a uh, security offering because they had a pre-sale and they used those funds to build up the system. I, I'm a big holder of Ethereum. I personally think Ethereum should not be prosecuted, but to go after XRP, but not Ethereum is strange. And then we look at the connections there and it's like, well, there could definitely be some conflict of interest. And with this debacle, with BlackRock, with Grayscale, not being able to turn it into a, a Bitcoin spot ETF and all those things of the sort, I'm thinking, no, all right? We're not just going to take it at face value anymore. We're going to look deeper and understand that these deadlines don't matter because every single time a deadline came by, they did not respect it. They keep stalling these things. And again, it's not for consumer protection. There is no justification to say, oh, making sure that people can't buy spot ETFs, but only futures ETFs and only on the open market and only will actually save investors or save the investing public, let's call it. To allow an institution like BlackRock to set up the rails and to allow some of these other institutions. Ah, you understand the point, right? If BlackRock and all these guys are coming in, yet the price goes down, there's a very good reason for that. Because they already know they're going to get approved. It's just a matter of when. So people that normally buy the rumor, sell the news, would be buying right now in anticipation of the approval event because we all know it's inevitable. You might look at me and say, Dusty, we don't know for sure if they're going to approve the ETF. We know. We don't have to look at the 600 and 0 basically ratio. No, we have to look at the idea that BlackRock wants to offer Bitcoin spot ETFs because they've seen crazy demand. It's already available just to buy normally. It's already available through buying through MicroStrategy. It's already available on futures. So we all know the spot ETF is coming. X sec members have said it's coming. X or even current BlackRock employees have said it's coming. Everybody knows it's going to be coming. The only question is how many at one time and how much money will flow in that exact second and then over time. So if everybody knows this information and everybody's watching BlackRock's exact move. Wouldn't that then be the best thing to do right now? Just be to buy more crypto because we know that this is going to happen. Yet the price has not gone up a lot. Actually, matter of fact, the crypto market right now, as we speak, is in a pretty garbage spot. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, 
I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but exchange numbers are at some of the lowest points ever. And every person in crypto I've talked to right now is having the is having some of the worst months in a long while. And I'd say we're noticing that on every single front. Point being here again, we're at the bottom of the bottom. How else am I seeing this? I have never, never, ever seen a rate of giving up as high as this one. And I think all of my other crypto influencers are seeing it in their comment section, in their in their YouTube, on Twitter, that people are saying, I've given up. I've taken a loss. I've taken this, that, that. People are realizing their loss at a rate I have never seen before. And this is mostly in the stories. I can't actually back this up with the actual numbers. It's my own evidence from what I'm seeing with people around me. Guys, like uh, big crypto influencers, like Rookie, they been selling a lot of these altcoins and i've actually over the last two days seen that more times on twitter than i've ever seen it it's just interesting together with all those things i just said I i'm really noticing this might be one of those signals where interest in crypto is lowest faith in crypto is lowest people are thinking ah oh, what if it doesn't really do well we just had a like two percent minus or something panic was at some crazy point i'm noticing man this is that turnaround point it feels like it and perhaps in a couple of months we're going to look back and think yeah you see that was the point where things couldn't almost get any worse i'd say price wise things could get a little bit worse i'm talking in most of the numbers right volatility is so low nobody's trying to trade except for just kind of selling to take some profits back to think of a new strategy because this industry has not been moving for a while it feels like but in the back end products are moving things are going so wild regulation wise we're making big steps but then again the fear with binance the uk exiting all these things are lurking on us it's just a it's it's, it's a whirlwind of crazy things happening right now yet at the baseline of it all we know one big catalyst that's about to do really well. And it could be a couple of months, but it can't take that long that most likely will pump the marks. And I don't think it's gonna be like a an XRP event where the price is gonna pump and just dump the same day. I think this one will stick because it opens up the floodgates. I mean, even with XRP, I personally think that it's opened some of the floodgates here's for example something i'll remark uh, more about later in a video just want to quickly bring it to y'all's attention zalai pointed out that ripple got a favorable outcome in the u.s court and that the fta is now exploring the option of using the platform for cross-border payments from what i can understand it can generate real-time yada 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 and again they're very interested in it mostly now after the case has been settled and again similarly for these Bitcoin futures ETFs, I think a lot of the interest will only showcase itself once the floodgates are opened. And yes, they can buy through futures, yes, they can buy through MicroStrategy, but really the biggest part of it all will most likely be when these spot ETFs are opened. My thoughts, all right, not financial advice, but at the end of the day, even though I'm not a financial advisor, I wanna see how many of you guys are still bullish on crypto. So if you are, make sure you go ahead and press that like button. But more importantly, I wanna see in the comment section right now, if you guys think I am wrong, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you think my thoughts here are idiot, stupid, ridiculous, the fact that right now, almost any indicator would showcase, yeah, we, we, we should have hit the bottom. Things should be going pretty crazy, blazing from here on forward. Ripple won the case against the SEC. Yes, there's some FUD against Binance, but BlackRock is saying, okay, let's go for Bitcoin. All these other major institutions are saying, yeah, let's go for Bitcoin. And even from the retail side, the interest should be way higher than it is right now. Joe Rogan and Sam Altman uh, of, of uh, ChatGPT, both of them in the last week have said, well, Bitcoin could be this, Bitcoin should be that. In a bull run, that would have ignited cryptos traction so much more because every headline would be about it right now all of a sudden though it did almost nothing for the space which makes me think you know this is a manipulation effort this is a let's keep things low even though it should be going berserk already i've described before though i believe in the halving cycle in the sense that right now we've got about 180 days or something like that until the halving comes in and in that meantime a lot could still happen but around that and especially a couple months into it i think the bitcoin scarcity effect showcases again and we see crazy rushes but the spot etf approval can actually basically make this process a significant amount quicker or perhaps make the high a significant amount higher even though the fundamentals are not going to change as much anymore as most of the core parts are already set in stone another point to add how many millionaires are there around the world i don't know but a freaking ton of them there's not enough bitcoin in the world for every millionaire to own one can you just realize that for a little second that even if every millionaire in the world would want to have one they can't and that is basically the halving scarcity effect kicking in. The fact that it goes from six and a half to three and a bit Bitcoin per block. It just makes people realize once more that the amount of Bitcoin is finite. And so if you're not getting them now, you might never get them. And 
Yeah, I mean, I understand why BlackRock and guys like that are getting so heavily into it because if this indeed the people's money, if the people actually had it, people actually controlled it, they would lose all their grip. The bank system would just done. But as long as the institutions put their part into the system, it always, from their perspective, return back to the current financial system's principles of the extremely wealthy control it for the retail, for the normal, and they will make the most amount of money off of anything that happens. And as long as you understand that, as long as you understand that that, from that perspective, then it makes sense for them to keep prices low while they basically get their foot in the door, set all their rails up, buy I don't want to do my middle finger right there. Buy as much crypto as they humanly can, or I should say algorithmically can. Make sure you are as fearful as possible in this bad time that's been manipulated to be bad because in any history of crypto, the time that we're in right now, following all these announcements, following everything, would be the best time ever. So manipulate a bad time to then let the good times be hopefully, or most likely I should say, greater than ever because they've got their foot in the door and they're not going to let that out anymore. All right, it's like the, those annoying salesmen when they get your attention, right? You open the door, put the foot in and they're going to they're gonna let you break that foot before they leave. That's like BlackRock, right? They're going to sell you something, which is crypto. They're going to make sure it all goes through them. Not only BlackRock, I'm talking about that little uh, cartel, let's call it, uh, because they're not leaving, all right? You can try your best. You can try force that door. Ah! Force it! But they're not leaving. All you can do is accept your door is always going to be a little bit open and there's a foot in there now.